I woke up this morning, I was in a good mood, and then I met these people that you're about to meet, and I got angry. You'll see why. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Virginia Kimball and Christopher Carson. The two of you have been together for four years, but you do not want to be together anymore. Ms. Kimball, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why we're here in divorce court today? Um, well, I'm getting tired. I'm tired. I'm done. I'm through with this. He doesn't listen to my feelings. I can't talk to him about anything. I feel like, why are we in a relationship and we can't talk about adult stuff? We could talk about cartoons. We could talk about games, but we can't talk about him looking at people when we're out. He can't, we can't talk about pretty much finances together. We can't talk about anything adult-like. Well, what happens when you try to talk about things that are, are important? He leaves. He leaves. Yeah, we'll be like, say if we're like, we could be out to dinner, mm -hmm. and we'll I'll be saying something, and he'll just walk up and leave when I start talking about something he doesn't like. You're out to dinner. Yes. And he gets up and leaves the table. Yes. And leaves you sitting there by yourself. Yes. Because he doesn't want to talk about something. Yes. Mr. Carson, tell me she made that up. <laughs> um. I mean, it doesn't happen exactly that way. It's, well, tell me exactly how it happens. The way, the way it happens, I, I don't just get up and leave abruptly. Uh, we'll be talking and she'll, like, for example, she'll state something. She'll say, um, babe, let's talk about what we're going to do next weekend financially. Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, do we have to talk about that right now? And she'll be like, I want to talk about it right now. And I'll be like, well, this isn't the moment in time. I, was, I, I may have already been doing something. I may be sitting taking care of the kids. And then... So you simply think it's a timing issue, that yeah. she wants to... You're more than willing to talk about certain things, but not at the moment she insists on talking about it. When she tells me she wants to speak, sometimes I'll speak to her, and then when I get, do get frustrated, that's when I'll be like, okay, I don't want to talk this. I don't want to have this conversation right now. But do you and get then... up and leave her at the restaurant yeah, alone in the table? Isn't that just tacky? <laughs> yes, I have. Yeah, isn't that just tacky yeah. and rude? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's a tacky yes. rude. Now, Ms. Kimball, let me ask you this. When you do talk to the man, do you talk to him? Yes. Or are you talking to him? Um, sometimes it depends on a situation. I can be aggressive. Um, but so I, sometimes I feel insecure about, like, my weight. I used to be 300 pounds. I lost, like, a lot of weight. I was just 300 pounds. You look pounds. great. Thank you. You like, look absolutely great. So I get a little insecure sometimes. And I don't have my big boot. Like, you know, I used to be more... Put together, I used to feel like, and he'll be looking. You used to be more put together I than to, that. I don't know. I, yeah, I guess. I you look awfully put together to me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I mean, you lost a lot of weight. That usually makes women feel more secure. It seems to have had the opposite effect because on you. I, was, I don't understand. Oh, I'm sorry. When I was bigger, I was more portionate. Like I had bigger, you know, hips Big, and bigger butt, and like my, you know, did everything you prefer was bigger. her when she was bigger? Um, I love her at all sizes, but I fell in love with her when she was bigger. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. That big butt thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a thing, you know? It, injections and people dying to die. I, like, I don't get it. But anyway, um, what has he done, if anything, to make you feel insecure? Or is it just you? Well, say I'm, like... I like to talk about my feelings. So pretty much I'll tell him, I don't feel, you know, secure today. I feel like, you know, you could tell I don't feel good because I'm not dressed. I'll be in shorts and my hair mm -hmm. will be up. And I tell him prior to us going anywhere, I'll be like, babe, I don't really feel good today. So then I feel like it's disrespectful that I'm telling you prehand that I don't feel good, that he's looking at everybody who feels better than me. Obviously, people who are just like... Does he always look at other women when oh, you're out together? Oh, only when I don't feel good. I have to be all, like, bougie and, like, oh, my God, like this, for him to be like, oh, my God. Oh, and just I be see, all I see, all day. I see but what you're if I don't feel good, he's going to be on everybody else walking by acting so like you that. So, like when you bougie. say you don't feel good, that translates in you don't look good. You don't, don't put yourself good. together. Yes. And you look at other people when she doesn't look all put together. Is that true or she get that wrong? No, that's... It, 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 at that point, like, she'll tell me, she'll be like, I don't feel good today. And I'll be like, okay. And then as soon as we step outside, a girl will pass by me and she'll be looking at me and I'll be looking down or I'll be in my phone. And she'll be like, oh, that girl was all up in your face. Y'all was sitting there having a looky contest. And I'll be like, what? I didn't even notice who you was talking about. She'll be like, that girl you seen, the girl with the blue shirt. I'll be like, 
Look Has up he ever shirt. done anything sketchy or suspect? Yes. Three years ago, we were at an event, and we saw one, um, one of his ex-girlfriends there. Right. And pretty much, I seen her, this is my first time seeing her, I'm like, oh, she doesn't, you know, she's not all that cute, like, you know, like, I thought she was gonna be, like, mm -hmm. Beyonce, the way he, he was talking about her before, so I seen her, I was like, oh, she's not all that cute. So then he got mad at me and pretty much tried to leave me there for saying that. Now, did you just say, oh, she's not that cute? Or did, or did you say something dramatic? Ms. Kimball? Oh. <laughs> did you say something dramatic? Probably. Probably so. But you, can I say this to you? Yes. No matter what he's doing, you need to believe in who you are and your value, and that has nothing to do with what you look like. You're very, very beautiful. You really are. You're just, you're just, you're just pretty from head to toe. But that is not the measure of your womanhood. You're, you're the value of who you are. That's just the package that it's in. And if you're so worried about that package, him looking at other girls and his other girls aren't thinking, judging yourself. You know, am I better than her? Am I not better than her? We women beat ourselves up with that all the time, and we become really crazy with it. I yes. mean, it, it gets to be a nutty thing. And if to understand your value is to to progress intellectually and mentally and emotionally. But don't, is my butt bigger than her butt? You know, is she that? The, oh, it's, it's very self destructive. Mm -hmm. And he can't fix that for you. You gotta fix that for you. Definitely. He's not responsible for how you feel about yourself in that manner. You with me oh, yes. in, in that regard? Yes. That's why it's called self esteem. Okay. Um, Mr. Carts, <laughs> do you think she lacks self esteem? It's not often, but there is times where her self-esteem will be like, it'll go up and down. Like she'll wake up and like instantly when we wake up, she'll be like, I don't feel good today. And, but what I think to myself is, how could you not, how could you be aware of your whole day plan if we've only been up for five seconds? Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you, every morning my husband gets a weather report. <laughs> I get up, I think about myself, I'm a moody chick. And I let him know, if things are a little sideways, just so he don't get hurt. And so women tend to think about how they feel more than men do, you know? We think about it, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So you can't get a weather report in the morning, we know. And if she's not feeling well, believe it. <laughs> <laughs> we met this one girl together. I put her number in his phone and um, he left and he pretty much took her number and went to go contact her by himself. Mr. Garson, is that accurate? Are people around you tearing your relationship apart? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. Ms. Kimball, yes. you said something in your papers that I had to read twice to make sure I got it right. You say that you taught Mr. Carson here how to get with girls on social media. Is that accurate? Yes. Um, Why would you do a thing like that? Okay, well, when we first started dating, I was adventurous. I liked girls, you know, to, you know, uh -huh. I like girls. So we met this one girl together. I put her number in his phone, and um, I stopped talking to her because I wasn't, like, I was having problems going on with my life, and I was like, you know what, that's, put that to the side. I have other mm -hmm. important stuff. So pretty much one day me and him were arguing at the hotel we were staying at, and that day he told me pretty much that he was gonna go his own separate way that day. Mm -hmm. So he left and he pretty much took her number and went to go contact her by himself. Mr. Carson, is that accurate? No, no, I will. T to tell me what halfway, happened. Halfway, not entirely. She contacted me. She contacted me um, looking to hang out with both of us. Right. And I told her that my wife wasn't there and she still wanted to hang out with me. Mm -hmm. And I mean, not really thinking too forward into the situation. I said, okay, mm -hmm. and then, but it's like, I didn't just go out and pursue the conversation. Mm -hmm. It was, the conversation came to me. It came, right. she, I, like had she you said, at she that juncture already decided to leave her? I mean, um, it yeah. seems that you leave a lot, and I don't know when you leave, if you just leave momentarily, if you're, you leave for weeks, or if you leave never intending to come back, but come back anyway. It's like, I don't leave just like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm never going back. I'm never gonna see her again. I don't have any intentions to. I leave like, I can't handle this right now and I need to go clear my head. 
What is it that you can't handle? Is it the nature of the conversation itself or the manner in which she relays that information? It's more the manner because, like, she'll, like, like she says, sometimes she can be aggressive. And sometimes she'll, it won't be, hey, babe, let's talk. It's more like, we need to talk. You gonna mm -hmm. sit down, you gonna listen to what I'm saying. I'm talking, I feel like talking right now, so you feel like hearing. And I'm right. like, I don't feel like hearing right now. She's like, well, Ms. I feel Kibble, like you did need you to. just hear him? Yes, I hear is him. There, is there any truth in that? No, because I c come, I'm already broken down pretty much. So mm -hmm. a woman, I wanna talk. I'm not gonna be like, if I'm like in a bad mood, I'm gonna be like, babe, like, I need to talk to you about this. I feel like you're making me feel insecure because every time we go somewhere and I'm not looking up to par, you're looking at somebody. He'd be like, ah. Whatever, man, I'm tired of this. I, see, I should have left two weeks ago. Both of you spend way too much time thinking about what people look like. You can't build a relationship on superficial matters. And it seems like that's all you people talk about. Do you know what I'm saying? I understand. And it's sad. It is sad. Because I want to be, I want to be in my sweats and stuff at home with my man. I mean, I feel like everybody should be able to be themselves in front of their man. They shouldn't have to feel Do you, that way because they're not dressed. Are you at all dismissive or derogatory with her when she doesn't look her best? Does she have to look her best all the time in order to get attention from you? I mean, like, she doesn't have to look her best at home, but when we go out, I, like, I, I, I don't, it's not a standard that I would say, but it's like, I, like, for example, I, I don't leave the house in like, I don't leave the house in sweatpants to go somewhere important, you know? So I would expect her also to get, not like a put on a fancy clubbing <sighs> dress or something, but to like dress herself nicely, put on a little makeup. Cause we're going somewhere, we're going out in public and your first appearance is your only appearance, you know? So if we walking around and people see us and they're like, oh, y'all look your like- Your first appearance is only your only appearance if, it, if appearance is all you're about. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I mean, I, I go out looking new Jack crazy on occasion, <laughs> but it doesn't define me because I got stuff going on up here and in here, you know? So if somebody sees me and I look, who cares? You shouldn't care, but you do. I go into the closet, I pick up a shirt. She doesn't like the shirt? No, babe, don't wear that shirt. I put on the shirt. No, babe, why you still got that shirt on? We are talking about ending a relationship here, and I have spent the last 20 minutes or so talking about what you people look like. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. So, Ms. Kimball, I'm going to ask you a question. What is it you really want from me? I don't think you want to leave. No. I, I <laughs> do, but then I don't because there's so much other good things that he do. It's not just always bad. It's just that I feel like sometimes being around him just, like, it messes with me. Like, I can't be myself. I can't be me. I can't get stuff done sometimes. Mr. Carson, why do you think you're here? Uh, do you want to leave or do you want... No this thing fixed? I don't want to leave. I definitely don't want to leave. I love my wife. Um, my problem is, it's just, it's control. Like, I've, I've grown up my whole life avoiding control, avoiding people telling mm -hmm. me what to do, trying to make my own path, and then to marry someone who is well, going to well, try in to... In what way does she control you? It, because, like, say, I, get your, I wake up in the morning, I go into the closet, I pick up a shirt, she doesn't like the shirt? No, babe, don't wear that shirt. I put on the shirt. No, babe, why you still got that shirt on? Because I like this shirt. You know, it, like if I, like I'll go to the store and I'll go pick a pair of shoes and she's like, those shoes are ugly. And then I'll tell her, you don't wear the shoes. I'm wearing the shoes. You, you get stuff that I don't think is that nice either sometimes, but if you, do you like do it, that? you do it. Because he always wants to buy sneakers. Like, it's more than life. Do you know we are talking about ending a relationship here and I have spent the last 20 minutes or so talking about what you people look like? <sighs> you talk about controlling behavior. You talk about controlling his shirts and controlling your shoes. That's just silly. Is she control, trying to control anything else? Uh, yeah, she controls my parenting, too. Well, it's... Talk, talk to me about that. What happens is, like, we'll go to the store and my daughter, the whole day, she'll be just 
acting wild, just running around, not listening. And then she'll go pick something up and she'll come and she'll be like, I want this. And me, I'm the type of person, I'll let her carry around the store because it's the store, I mean, whatever. So she carries her on the store the whole time. And then when we get to the aisle, I tell her, you're not getting that just like I told you when you first picked it up, but I let you carry it the whole time. And then she'll turn to me and be like, babe, why are you doing her like that? She's just a kid. And I'm like, she has to learn. Mm -hmm. And well, it's always just like, it's leeway for the children. You think she's too lenient on them. Yeah, and then whenever I try to be um, like a stern parent, then she makes it seem like I'm being mean. And the kids look at me like, Daddy, you're being mean, and they go run to her. Ms. Mm. Kimball, what, what do you think about your parenting issues? Well, I feel like kids are gonna be kids sometimes, so you gotta, I mean, like, if they're gonna be picking up stuff, sometimes you can't just be like, all the, like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, all the time. Sometimes you gotta let them be kids and just play and stuff. So, well, well, if you guys go in a store and he tells them he can't have something, do you have a problem with that? Well, sometimes, yeah, sometimes with my daughter, because. I would have dealt with her all day. You've only dealt with her a little part of mm -hmm. the day. If I've been with her all day and she's just been acting out like a little bit, I mean, yeah. In divorce court, people tell me the most intimate details of their lives. Join the conversation and share your experience on our Twitter page at Divorce Court and on our Facebook page. See how fans deal with their own relationships. The discussion can get heated. Don't miss it. I had to take a moment to think about what I was going to say to the two of you. And I was trying to think of a word that, that described effectively what I saw. Couldn't think of one. Because I'm not really sure. You guys got to get off the superficial thing. You, I mean, you got to get off that today. Because you have children together, and they're going to learn what you teach them. And you, they're going to learn that what they look like is the it defines how they should feel for that day and how you, you know, and that shoe and that shirt and all that kind of stuff. The fact that you talked about that endlessly just boggled my mind and you have children and all that. That's number one. Number two, you have to stop that leaving nonsense. Yes, ma'am. Because <laughs> while she is responsible for her own self-esteem, you are also responsible for the damage that you do. If you keep tell a person, telling a person, and, and, and this is what you tell them, if you don't act the way I want you to act, I will abandon you. And that's what she reads when you just get up and walk off anywhere, anytime, for any reason, and come home when you get ready. That tells her she can be left in totality anytime. It is devastating to a person. And you will find that when you start feeding somebody all of that sense of insecurity, they're going to start believing it. It's going to start, it's going to sink into her soul somewhere that she's not quite good enough and that she's going to have to look gorgeous all the time because this brother can leave at the slightest notice. And then what she will do is transfer that feeling on to her daughter that her daughter's got to be really careful about what she looks, because dudes don't really stay unless you're perfect and wonderful, and, and, and what kind of issues she's going to have about her body and her size. To be perfect all the time, or the catch you're with is going to break camp. You know what I'm saying to you? Yes, ma'am. And to the extent that your wife is destabilized, your children aren't stable, because she's the one holding them. Yes, ma'am. you got to be more of a man than that. Yes, Don't worry about what she says about your shoes and your socks and your shirt. Don't worry about the appearances that you make. Make your life about something other than what you see, and then maybe you'll have a life worth living other than the one that you have. This matter is yes, adjourned. Virginia and Christopher made me angry because they are what I call storefront people. They're interested in what they look like, what they have on, the impressions that they make, the appearances that they have, but they had nothing really meaningful to say about who they were as people and how they were going to raise their kids. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222. 